In this video, we're going to consider how acquisition parameters can alter the quality of data that's recorded by an XPS instrument. These three spectra represent data collected using different acquisition parameters. The instrument settings are all identical. The energy interval over which these data are acquired are all identical. But what is different is the dwell time in each case and the energy step size. As the energy step size increases for the same acquisition time and the same energy interval, then the number of channels into which data are assigned decreases. And by the same logic, we must increase the dwell time per data channel in order to maintain the same total acquisition time. So as a consequence of these changes to the acquisition parameters, we ought to find that the signal in each data channel changes in quality depending on which strategy is used to collect these data. The concept of quality in XPS data is a little vague in the sense that it depends on the application to which the data will be put. If for example you're interested in shapes within these data, this is an example of a measurement that might be performed to evaluate the charge compensation state for an instrument in which case we would like to evaluate the valley that we see here but in addition we would like to evaluate the shapes that we see in the overall peak structure so as the charge compensation values are adjusted you may find a change in the shape of the piece and these are important to the setup of the instrument so the quality in this case requires additional data points to make sure that we don't miss changes in shapes that will be significant to the application and then there's another example of quality where we might want to calculate the area for these peaks where the stability of the peaks are not in question if we understand the chemistry of the sample and we want to measure just the area of the peaks then we can do this using synthetic components applying peak models to data does not require the same number of data points as when you're trying to evaluate whether a spectrum is evolving with the adjustment of some kind of parameter. If on the other hand we want to calculate an area based on an integration region, let's put a Shirley background on this one, you can see a background has been calculated from these data and this means the integration of the data to calculate the background and in addition we are going to integrate the peak above this background signal to calculate the area of the peak. So the number of data channels is then related to the precision with which this area can be calculated. Therefore, choosing a small number of data channels would compromise the calculation of both the background and the area of the peak. So the concept of quality of data does depend on the application and also the type of data analysis that is about to be performed. The most important part of measuring a spectrum is that when we select the acquisition parameters that we don't introduce any artifacts into the data. The shapes in these polymer data are quite useful for looking at the possibility of artifacts in the line shapes as a consequence of different scan parameters. So in this case we've got three different measurements and they are performed at 0.1 EV step size, 0.05 and 0.025 EV. The acquisition time is maintained at the same value by adjusting the dwell time. And When we overlay these you can see that these spectra for the most part are very very similar. So we would like to think that we could have used either one of these measurements to measure the chemical states within these data and also the amount of substance by integrating the peak area above a background. Now if we examine these in more detail and we look at these data in a trough and at a peak maximum there is a trend here that you can see if you look closely and that is the data with a 0.1 EV step size is slightly increased with respect to the other data from 0.05 and 0.025 relative to the signal within the, the trough. 
Elsewhere, it's not so obvious, but you can see there is some sort of trend. At each point, the yellow dot is above the other two. And similarly, if we look at the maximum in this peak structure, you can see that the yellow dots that correspond to 0 0.1 EV are slightly lower than these other ones that were measured with a finer step size. If we want to investigate these types of fluctuations in intensity, then it's probably better to use a sample that is less involved in the sense that charge neutralization is not part of the measurement. And so if we consider a clean copper sample rather than a polymer, we have no charge neutralization issues. And if we consider the same mode of acquisition with different step sizes, then we can get an idea of what is happening when we change the step size and perform a scanned spectrum. So here I'm going to look at a copper 2p. And the step size is 0 0.025 EV, pass energy 10, and the dwell time is 200 milliseconds. And what I would like to do is compare the way this peak is constructed when we use a different step size. So if I go to 0 0.1 and overlay these data, well, we see some kind of difference, but that could easily be just the step size is coarser, and therefore we don't see quite so clearly what this peak shape ought to be. It'll be clearer if we look at these data using points rather than lines. So the 0 0.025 is the yellow dot in this instance. So we can see that the 0.1, it does appear to be slightly lower. And what happens if we go to 0.2? It's slightly lower again. So what is happening here is that as we change the step size, we are altering the shape of the peak. By considering different step sizes for this narrow copper 2p 3 halves peak, we can see that in the peak maximum, that when we have a large step size, the signal appears to be lower intensity than when acquired using a small step size. However, when we go to the downslope of this peak, then we start to see that the same green point here that would represent the larger step size has more intensity. And the reason that we see these changes is because we're measuring scanned spectra. And when we say scanned spectra, we mean that voltages are being scanned and signal acquired. So if we change the voltage and we change it over a small interval, then the response of the instrument is more precise. And when we use a larger step size, we may request a voltage, but it doesn't necessarily get there during the measurement process. And hence we see that the signal for large steps tends to be lower within the peak maximum compared to these narrow steps. And these same influences are resulting in the green point raising up above these other points that correspond to the smaller step size. So this is a consequence of scanned spectra. The influence of step size is even greater when we look at a narrower peak. This is a silver 3D 5 halves peak. It's been measured using the same step sizes we see here that we use for the copper 2p. And you can see these green points that represent the 0 0.4. Let me just put up a legend. So we've got the 0 0.4 step size, these green points. And you can see how these other points and colorings for the different step sizes of 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.025, they will align vertically where we've got an energy channel that corresponds to the identical energy. Then we see the green and then the pink and then the orange and then the yellow. When we go to the other side of the peak, you can see that on the downside, the green is the highest, then the pink, then the orange, and then the yellow. So scanning these voltages makes a difference to the line shape that we ultimately obtain when we measure XPS spectra. From this analysis, it would suggest that using a smaller step size would produce the better quality peak shape. There is, however, a downside to using a smaller step size.
and that is you're distributing signal amongst more data bins. And if we distribute the signal amongst more data bins, it means that the count in each data bin is lower. And since we're dealing with pulse counted data, the uncertainty in each data bin is the square root of the counts per bin. So we lose quality of data if we don't have sufficient counts within each data bin. The advantage of using a step size of 0.1 is that we can spend more time collecting data into each data channel for a given experimental time. The disadvantage is that the line shape is compromised. So ideally we would like to be able to accumulate signal and still have the advantage of a good line shape that we obtain with 0.025 EV. And we can do this if we make use of an option on the spectrum processing dialog window after we've measured the data using 0.025 EV, we can calculate a spectrum from these data that has the quality that we're looking for, namely good peak shape and also number of counts per bin. The calculator property page has a set of buttons that can be used to manipulate spectra and change the characteristics of the acquisition parameters effectively after the fact. And the one that I'm going to use initially is this split spectra into two. The button applies to the data in the tiles that are displayed in the left hand side. So I've got one spectrum displayed in the left hand side and if I press the button split spectra into two I end up with a new VAMAS file and this VAMAS file contains spectra that are constructed from the original spectrum in such a way that when I display these data overlaid you can see how the data are constructed from two spectra with a an energy step of 0.05 and they are still organized in terms of energy bins according to the original spectrum. I'm going to do this a second time because what I would like is a spectrum with a step size of 0.1. Now I have four spectra because I had two overlaid in the active tile. I now have spectra that when overlaid create the shape of the original spectrum before I split them at all. And now you can see how each one of these spectra contributes a different data bin to the overall shape of the original spectrum. Now at this point, if I simply add the values together for these different spectra, I would then lose information. So I'm going to use another option that relies on the selection in the right hand side, and this is rebin selected VAMAS blocks. And what this will do will be more obvious once I've performed the operation is create a new file from the spectra that was selected and rather than having the offset that we saw so the spectra now all have the same data bins in terms of energy so we can see rather than having the dots offset between these points they are now all clustered around a particular point and these have been calculated so there is some manipulation of intensities by this step and it does have consequences but nevertheless, the data now are aligned in such a way that we can apply the button Cumulative Spectra. And this button Cumulative Spectra will take the data that are overlaid in the tiles and create a set of VAMAS blocks that are formed by adding first the one spectrum, so we end up with the original spectrum for the first one. The second one is the sum of the first two, the third is the sum of the first three, and the fourth is the sum of the all four. So if I now look at this spectrum here, this one with the acquisition time of 0.8, I've reduced the number of data channels, I've got a step size of 0.1, but the effective acquisition time has increased because the dwell time has increased. So this now should be comparable to the original spectrum that was measured using a 0.1 EV step size. If I copy this spectrum together with the original spectrum from the raw data, and this is 0.1 here, so if I hold the control key down and select this spectrum then both will be selected, create a new experiment frame and copy, and when I copy these two VAMAS blocks together the 0.1 here refers to the step size and the 0.8 refers to the number of seconds that were accumulated. So I've got two spectra, both with a step size of 0.1. The one has a longer dwell time, so we need to compare these in counts per second. 
and when I overlay these we should see a pattern and the pattern is as we saw before is that the data that are required using a step size of 0 0.1 when compared against a step size that is 0 0.1 that is accumulated from the original data of 0 0.025 we see that on the rising edge we have a disparity between these two data that the the one that was measured from the 0 0.025 data and then accumulated all are a higher intensity than when we have the data scanned with a step size of 0 0.1. Then on the downside we also see the same pattern as we saw before. Intensity for these points that are on the downside of the peak that were acquired using a step size of 0 0.1 are all higher in intensity than the ones that were measured at 0 0.025 and then accumulated to form a 0 0.1 step size spectrum. So essentially we've maintained the shape of the data that was acquired at 0 0.025 and we've also managed to accumulate more signal into each one of these bins so according to the Poisson statistics of pulse counted data we should have a better signal to noise ratio when we combine the spectra in this way that were originally measured with a 0.025 step size.